Hi, everybody. We're back. This is Dave Vellante. I'm with Wikibon.org, and this is SiliconAngle.com's continuous coverage of ServiceNow's Knowledge Conference. We're here in Vegas. This is day three, day two and a half. We're winding up. Um, we've been bringing customer stories all week. I know it's probably getting you know, repetitive. We sound like a broken record here. These ServiceNow customers seem so happy. We've been probing for, okay, what don't you like? And, you know, maybe little things here and there, but generally speaking, we're talking about an elated customer base, thrilled to be transforming not only IT, but their businesses. Tickets.com is here. Uh, Greg Crowder is the Vice President of Application Delivery, and Kim Redding uh, runs the PMO for Tickets.com. Folks, welcome to theCUBE. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate you guys coming on and sharing your story. We've, we've had a number of customer stories, as I was saying. Greg, let me start with you. Tell us a little bit about Tickets.com. If you want Justin Timberlake tickets, go to Tickets.com. We sort of, I think most people know about it, but tell us about your business. Tickets.com provides leading, best in uh, industry technology for ticketing venues, major sports clients, uh, major venues across, really internationally, domestically. Uh, so when you go online to buy tickets for uh, a major event like a Paul McCartney at Fenway, you're going through services that we provide to the venue. So we control the entire software as a service platform around that. So talk about what's driving your business. It's obviously a competitive business. I mean, you compete with you know, other large firms like yours, you compete right. with a guy in the street, you compete with eBay. So you've got to have you know, availability, you've got to have great seats, you've got to have great prices, you've got to be able to service the customer, you can't make mistakes or it kills your brand. Talk about some of those things that are, that are driving your business and how you're responding from a technology perspective. I would say the technology drives our business. So we are looking to separate ourselves from our competition through our technology. And I think we've done a, a tremendous job in, in doing that. Our technology is truly best in breed. Uh, we've proven, we've, we've thought outside the box. We've innovated new ways to perform ticketing solutions. Uh, and our customer base has been extremely excited about what we provide. Can you add a little color to that? I mean, what, what really excites you about the, the technology to the extent that you can share it? I mean, what's, what are you most proud of there? Uh, my personal favorite is we worked with uh, one of our partners to build a FIFO first in, first out waiting room that had never been done in the industry before at the request of one of our large customers. So. Uh, you know, when you go to a major, tickets come on sale and, and you go to a URL to purchase a ticket, you're generally put into a queue. And this, this product or this configuration allows you to get a token and be in line. So it's kind of a virtual line instead of a little bit more of a lottery system which most of our competition uses. Okay, so from a customer standpoint, I know if I'm, if it's truly first come, first serve. Mm -hmm. uh, exactly. Now, do I know that as a customer? Do you guys advertise that, or is that just something that's part of the experience? It, that really depends on our partners, how they want to market that, if they go with that configuration. But you so. allow them to, do you have, you allow, the technology allows them to expose that, if in fact they want to do that. Correct. Oh, okay. Correct. That's kind of cool. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Kim, talk a little bit about your role uh, in the PMO at, at Tickets.com. Well, through the PMO, we run basically all projects throughout tickets.com, whether it be infrastructure changes, or client implementations, new client implementations, or custom work, uh, as well as the releases um, of our applications that we are developing. So managing the, the SDLC lifecycle as well. So it's full life cycle from, is it from business case all the way through implementation and? and we work with the teams who, who do the, the actual implementation of the pieces. Are you guys like really rigorous about business cases up, up front or does it just depend? Uh, is it the line of business is really doing well? Can they sort of drive projects through or do you have sort of a standardized process that you, that you do to get into the sort of PMO? Well, we're building the processes. Uh -huh. uh, certain things we have rigorous processes for and other things have not necessarily followed a process. Okay. So it, it's, it's a, some growing pains that we're going through and making sure that we have the appropriate processes and working through them. And you mentioned, Kim, off, off camera, that you're just starting to use ServiceNow for the, for the PMO, right? Mm -hmm. so, so Greg, you've had experience with ServiceNow for a number of years, right? Correct. Okay, so can you talk about that a little bit? What was the, let's start with the, the beginning. What was the catalyst to bring ServiceNow in? What did, what did the environment look like you know, before ServiceNow? And, and then you know, why'd you bring ServiceNow in? I think 
before ServiceNow, and even in some aspects of our business today, we have disjointed process, uh, different repositories for project artifacts, for knowledge-based uh, articles, for, you know, we use spreadsheets in one area, we use SharePoint in another to, to do data housing. So there was a real siloed approach. You know, each business unit had its, its own repository and its own way of doing things, and that, that didn't have a lot of transparency. Uh, and what we found is to be truly innovative, it, you need to break down the silo walls and you need to allow people to understand the process as a whole. So where's, what's my role in the system, you know, in the, in the total ecosystem of our work? What's coming into me? How do I need that to look so I can focus on doing my work? And then what do I need to provide to the teams downstream from me so that they can focus on doing their work and not on the actual communication? And that's where ServiceNow really has helped us, is we break down those silos, we define these automated processes that allow each team to focus on the work itself and not on the communication of the work to the next group. We let the tool or the platform handle that communication and that really, it's done a lot of disintermediation of resources to allow, which allows the labor force to focus on greater innovation and creativity. So talk a little bit more about your role as the head of application delivery. Um, I got excited when I heard you were you know, head of application delivery. It seems to me that the, the application folks at this conference are um, not the starting point uh, for ServiceNow, but is that, was that not the case with tickets.com? Were you heavily involved in the initial you know, idea to bring in ServiceNow? Uh, and, and if so, is that, is that unique? Uh, I personally was not heavily involved in the initial decision. I was running a different part of the business. Uh, I think the teams that were initially involved identified those, those gaps, uh, realized that we needed a platform to facilitate that. Uh, so what we found is after we got deep into the product and really started to understand the value that it can bring and, and working with ServiceNow as partners, is that there was a tremendous opportunity to build great things. So custom workflows, custom applications, we were uh, a finalist this year for Innovation of the Year Award for, for something that we did there. Uh, so there's great opportunity. I, I wouldn't say the application guys are, are brought in last. Uh, certainly, Kim running the PMO it makes it a priority to include as many teams as possible when we break new ground in a different area of the platform. You know, we try to get people in and define the requirements, make sure we're building a process that everybody will use and adopt moving forward. So, I mean, most customers that we talk to start with incident and change and, and, and problem. Correct. I presume the same was true with, 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 with you guys. Correct. And, yes. and, and then, so then you start sort of thinking about the application portfolio in a, in a, in a broader sense. Is that true? Is that what's happening with you guys? Yeah, we started out very small and we're really, as we learn the application and as we get smarter within the application, we can work smarter as a company. So whether it's the department uh, cross-functional area workflows that we implement that allow for even the project management team actually to take a step back because we don't need to do that coordination of those resources, all the steps are lined out in the workflow with the with the predecessors and such. So when when you start out with service now you have to start out small and keep it simple. Because if you try to give too many people too many things, make it over complicated, they will never really adapt it because it's too much to grasp at once. So we really had to start out small and then make our way to the point where we're at today where people are starting to come to us and look for us to solve their process and their, their everyday work day issues and, and to help them potentially you know, reduce their costs and time doing various tasks. Now do you have everything in a, in a you know, single CMDB today or is that still evolving? Well, one of the mistakes I would say that we made when we implemented ServiceNow initially is that we did not implement the CMDB. So now we're at the point where we are moving forward and implementing the CMDB so that we can have 
the, the interconnection between the incident changes. Well, and, and so you, you, you pose that as a, as a you, you would have loved to be able to have done that, but I talked to a lot of customers at this event said, you know, we want to do that, but it's hard because the politics involved and exactly. the processes. And so, well, you say, you, you call it a mistake, maybe it wasn't because, you know, you, might have got your head chopped off if you tried. Kind of thing, yeah, well, you know? very true. So you got to be careful. <laughs> yeah, I would say, I would say it, w it benefited us in the sense that we could focus on the incidents, the workflows, and streamlining those processes. It, from a technology standpoint, we now have to go back and fill in that gap. Mm -hmm. And there's some there's some real benefit to having the CMDB in terms of automation and, and pulling in fields and removing some of the the manual aspects of, of human involvement. You know, like form entry and things things like that. So I think when Kim says it's, it's a mistake, it's more, well, there's a pain there that it would have been great if we could have remediated out the, out the front door. Well, so, so this is where, you know, I think if you have a top-down edict, if somebody comes in from the senior manager and says, look, we have to do this, but you know, let's face it, most guys in the corner office aren't thinking about the CMDB every, every day, all Correct. day. And so, as a result, they're going to say, look, let's let the team decide, and you've got other people sort of, whatever, hanging onto processes, people don't want to make changes, and you know, that's a big step, so you know, maybe that's something that that we need to do further research on reporting it at Wikibon. Uh, I'm interested also, because the other benefit of the CMDB as I see it, let me put forth the premise, you guys, you guys are the experts, help me you know, confirm or deny this. You, you know, most organizations have hundreds if not thousands of applications, and you develop these new systems, you deploy these systems, and then you pay for them, and they never die. Um, now that may or may not be representative of your organization, but it is, I know, of many, many of the companies that, that I've worked with and studied. It seems like if you've got a system like ServiceNow and, and you've got the CMDB, you can actually tear down systems that aren't driving ROI to the organization. Um, in, in IT, we have a tough time sometimes getting rid of stuff. So, it, first of all, is that true? Mm -hmm. Is that indicative of, of IT in general and specifically tickets.com situation? And do you see ServiceNow and this notion of a CMDB as being able to help you actually manage that portfolio over time? You want to take that one? It's a long question that nobody wants to take. I, I, I'll, I'll take it. The, I, I would say yes. In IT in general, people like to hang to legacy systems or involvements or processes. I mean, I, I, maybe it's a little more prevalent in IT by nature of IT, but I think that's, that's a problem in every aspect of business. You, you, you go with what you know and what you're comfortable with mm -hmm. doing. So this is where implementing any new change, whether it be ServiceNow or any kind of technology or platform or whatever, requires significant change management tactics. You need to work with people and get them to see the value and build the value and, and to get the adoption rates. So I, I do think that there is legacy processes that have to be overcome and that's a, just, it's just a challenge that everyone has to go through. Uh, what we've done to address that is we would build based off of observation what we thought people would best suit various teams and then we would show, the, show it to them. So it removed it from the abstract and it made it real. And, and then what we saw is instead of we can't do this because it violates our legacy, now we see, wow, that's really great, can we change it? And that right there, now we've made that fundamental shift from rejection to adoption and, and then it's on the development teams to go in and really make those modifications quickly to, to capitalize on the adoption. Yeah, okay, that's a great example. I mean, you hear, you know, hear the marketing messages from ServiceNow, no to now, no to now, but that's an example of Correct. what you're talking about. Okay, so now, um, tell me, are there things that, or what are the things that you can do today because of ServiceNow that, say, you couldn't do before? I would have to say, as we started out with, we had disparate systems. And you're really, we're really starting to be able to get a 360 view of the happenings in the company, cross-departmentally, as well as for, you know, from the beginning of a customer coming onto tickets.com and, and all that has happened with that customer, whether it be finance, whether it be resources, whether it be um, systems. So we're now able to see what is going on with the customers and be able to you know, find out exactly what's happening with the customer at any particular time, which is something that's very fundamental that we were really never able to do before. Has, has, the, um, has the user base noticed a change um, 
pre and post, and you've had you know, five years now, he's got quite a bit of experience with ServiceNow. Has it affected the user perception of IT and the, the client satisfaction? I mean, your IT users, I don't mean your... I would say yes. Uh, we went, <coughs> again, as you see the adoption rate, what we've gone is, what we've gone from is just, it'll never work to, wow, I see the value, let's change it, to now we are being hit daily with requests from parts of our organization saying, I was thinking, could we try something? And that's, that is just fabulous. I mean, I, I, I can't really quantify how great that is when you see people now challenging their own processes, their own assumptions, and trying to involve other teams around the company to build a process that benefits the organization as a whole. We just had Arne Josephberg on, and he's the CTO of, of ServiceNow, you, you probably know him. Um, and he was talking about this whole notion of, of the platform, platform as a service, and, and developing applications, Fred talks about it all the time, developing applications, um, allowing you know, more business-oriented people to develop applications. Do you guys going to take, or do you, or are you going to take advantage of that capability? Um, do, you, do you or will you develop your own apps on top of the platform? Uh, yeah, I mean, we, we already have to a certain degree. Uh, we built, that's right, you mentioned the, yeah, uh, the innovation finals. of the year. Yeah, yeah, so, so we'll talk about that too. We, uh, well, I'll, I'll segue right into it, uh, if that's okay. Um, we, we built a module that allows us to manage major events. So, for example, I talked about the on sales and when tickets go public and the uh, sheer volume of traffic, and you mentioned if we make mistakes, that really diminishes our brand. So we identified that as a very crucial component of our business, um, and we wanted to make sure that our processes were solid, that we could go into every one of those events, and we're, at times, at our peak, we're doing maybe 20, 30 of those a week, uh, so with the, with the same staff, so we need to make sure that we have really dialed in <clears throat> at, those, at those tough times, and we have checklists that are perfect and spot on, so we built a module within, within ServiceNow that tracks all of that, and we have seen tremendous adoption and tremendous increase and improvement in our service. And we've seen client responses back to us about how pleased they are with the service that they've gotten through those on sales uh, that we can tie back both to our great people because we have great staff and that process. So that's even a better story because I was probing before about, okay, are your IT customers, your internal clients, you know, happier? And you said yes, you know, clearly. But now that's an example of your, your end customers, you know, being, Correct. which is <laughs> practically far more important than the ones who pay the bills. <laughs> I have two, two final questions, uh, and, and either of you can take this first one. So, like I said, we've been hearing these effusive stories of, of service now and how great they are all week, and it's good, um, it's very impressive. What is on their to-do list? What would make your life easier if service now did X? What is, what is X? I think the quick and simple answer is the mobile application that we saw demonstrated yesterday mm -hmm. is exactly what we need. All of our users are or many of our users are remote. 90% of them, if not more, have smartphones, and the majority of them aren't sitting around in front of their computers anymore. They're out in the field, they're out at conferences, they're out doing things, but yet they still need to manage their incidents, their requests, whatever's coming into them, and, and their work. So having the mobile app quickly be able to update um, an incident or, or, or whatever's going on is, is the number one thing that we need. So right more now. mobile support, more platforms, and just go hard at the mobile. The Correct. Yes. The service now. Got to do mobile. Yeah. Like, I mean, that's where everybody's doing mobile right now. That's where it's at. Now, how about uh, advice <coughs> to fellow practitioners? Maybe Greg, start with you. What, what would you advise some of your peers out there? You're, 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 you're talking to them, and they're thinking about maybe going this direction. What would you? Tell them maybe things that you do differently. We talked about the CMDB and the mm -hmm. politics in, involved in that, but what else would you advise them? I think the first thing you need to look at is if you want to go with something in the cloud, and that's a that was a no-brainer for us. We, you know, to Kim's point about disparate workforce, we had to have something that was available in the cloud. Um, so. Once you make that decision, they start looking at vendors, which ties best to your business strategy. You know, you go with the service now, for example, because of the, the breadth and depth of the platform. And then from there, Kim made a great point earlier about you need to start small. Um, you know, go find where the biggest ROI is, 
you know, the low hanging fruit as it were and focus on that. Where can you get that initial adoption and then let it spread through the organization somewhat organically? Mm -hmm. It's the biggest challenge is managing that adoption and, and change. You mentioned, I, I lied, I got one more question. So you, um, you mentioned the cloud. Service levels, you happy with the service levels? I mean, is it, is it on the scale of one to 10? Are you off the charts happy, way better than you could have done yourselves, or maybe there's some room for improvement, or a total disaster? I think the value for, you said, you asked if we could do it better ourselves. That's a hard question, because I, we work with some of the best people in the industry. Uh, you know, I, I love our technology folks. I, I'd go to bat for them any day. Um, whether it's worth our time to go build that or to go with a partner, I think it's clear you go with the partner. You know, they, they have economies of scale that we're not going to achieve, so that the ROI is better by partnering up. That's great. All right, Greg and Kim, thank you very much for coming on and sharing the, the tickets.com story. You want some tickets, go online, get your token, you won't get cut in line by some toad. <laughs> um, great stuff, really appreciate you guys you know, coming on. All right, keep it right there, everybody. We'll be back to wrap up. We're live from Knowledge 13. This is Dave Vellante, wikibon.org. This is SiliconANGLE, this is theCUBE. We'll be right back.